This is a leopard gecko, and this is a crested gecko, and these two animals are probably the most popular lizards that you can keep in the pet trade, but which one is better for you? Today let's put them head to head and let's decide. My name's Adam, this is Shelby, you're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. So I don't know if you've met Shelby or not before. I got this really cool breeding project in the summer. I've got 10 new leopard gecko. Anyway, we'll introduce them to you or just go to Patreon and they're there. But the point of the video today is to decide which gecko is best because they are similar, but also very different. They're easy to care for. They're both beginner species. And I want to give you an option, which is best for you. So let's break it down into six categories and let's go. Category number one, size. Now size is very important because if you want a small animal or a big animal, depends, like enclosure size, care requirements, feeding, all of it is based on size. Good news, they're kind of the same size, sorta. Leopard geckos and crested geckos are both going to average around eight inches. Now, of course, they can be smaller or bigger. The crested geckos are gonna be, you know, a lot of tail, so are the leopard geckos, but the tails of the leopard geckos are gonna be thicker than the tails of the crested geckos, if they even have them. The tails grow back with leopard geckos, but not with crested geckos. And crested geckos are kind of thinner bodied than leopard geckos in a lot of ways. Their toes are different. There's a lot of differences in their bodies, not to mention the fact that leopard geckos have eyelids and crested geckos don't. So leopard geckos can close their eyelids, crested geckos have to lick their eyelids in order to clean them, because they do not close. And leopard geckos have giant forms, so you're gonna have bigger leopard geckos than you have crested geckos. If you want a bigger animal or a smaller animal, they're both really similar. The difference is one is arboreal, one is terrestrial. And we'll get into that with behavior, but if you really want like say a crested gecko, but you want it to be bigger, get like a Chihuahua or a Lichianus or something like that. Obviously they're not the same. I'm just saying they're similar enough. So between the two, I don't know that I can give either one of them a point. We're gonna go one, one. Each point, one point for each, depends on what you want. Leopard gecko's one, crested gecko's one. Second category, enclosure. Now this is a really big difference between the two. I think that both of them do really well in 30-ish, 40-ish gallon enclosures. Now, of course, you can always keep a leopard gecko in a 20 gallon long. These are terrestrial animals that will climb a little bit, but they're not gonna be climbing walls or plants. They're gonna climb off the ground a bit, but they're gonna spend most of their lives as a terrestrial gecko. So you give them length. Now, you can give them 20 gallons. That's generally the standard. That's what I recommend is a bare minimum. To me, I give my leopard geckos, for example, Cheech, I give him a 50 gallon. Is it necessary? Maybe not. Does he use it? Yes, they will use it if you set it up properly. A leopard gecko is gonna have a sand and soil and like a substrate that there's a leopard gecko care guide right here. If you wanna know more about it, basically they're a more arid species. So they're gonna be set up a lot different. A crested gecko is going to need more height. In my opinion, I like a front opening glass enclosure that's about 24 inches tall, 18 inches by 18 inches in diameter. So an 18 by 18 footprint 24 inches tall, two feet tall. This is good for two crested geckos. This is what I'd recommend. They're an arboreal species, so they're going to need more height than a leopard gecko. You can give as much space lengthwise as you want, but you're gonna be able to give them more room in a smaller footprint because you're gonna give them more height. You're gonna give them branches and cork rounds and plants and all sorts of things. And I recommend a bioactive enclosure. That's what I do for my crested geckos. Keep in mind, there's no such thing as something too big as long as I can find shelter, water, and food. So you can give them as big of an enclosure as you want. Heck, if you want to have a giant enclosure and learn how to cohab correctly, you can, especially with crested geckos. Females oftentimes are really good with each other. Do your research, of course. But if you want to have this giant enclosure with a bunch of crested geckos and gave them all sorts of hiding spots, you could. A little bit easier, in my opinion, than leopard geckos. So for enclosure size, I don't know that I can I'm gonna pick. I don't wanna make this a tie. I think that crested geckos get this one because they can have a smaller footprint, although they're gonna need more height. So two points for crested geckos, one point for leopard geckos. Heat, humidity, and lighting is category three. Now this is really a big difference. This is where they really start to separate here. I think that, okay, let's just get into it first, the parameters. 
Crested geckos are gonna like it around room temperature, a little bit warmer in my opinion, because I keep my house at 72-ish. So they're gonna want it in the mid 70s. Now give them a gradient. So at the top of the enclosure, it can get up to 78, bottom of the enclosure, 72. Something like that. Care guide right here for more detail. But they're not going to need a high temperature. They're not gonna need a basking spot per se, as much as just a place to get warmer or cooler, thermoregulate, right? If you wanna give them more humidity, you can, and I recommend it. 60 to 80% is where you're gonna need them. So a more humid species, and although just like a leopard gecko, being that they are nocturnal or crepuscular, I recommend that you give them a UVB, Shade Dweller 2.0, something like that. You don't need to, just make sure that the lighting portion is day and night cycle. So they know when it's day and they know when it's night, 12 on, 12 off, whatever. More information in the care guide. Either way, leopard geckos are very different. They're not gonna be 72 to 78 degrees. These are gonna be mid 70s to low 90s or high 80s, depending. Again, there is a care guide. We're gonna link it in the description. If you wanna know about the humidity, they're gonna like it a lot drier. So these animals are gonna need it right around 30, 40%. So these are a lot drier of a species. And in my opinion, depending on where you live, this can be harder to do. Because if you live in a humid area, I live in Southern Ontario, Canada, for example, I live close enough to Niagara Falls. If I toss a drone up from my backyard, I can see Niagara Falls, the actual falls. So it's very humid here, winter and summer. So to get an animal into 40% or lower humidity, I need a really strong basking ball. To get an animal into 60, 70% humidity, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, missed it once a day, put it on a mist king, whatever. Easier for me. But no matter where you live, even if you live in Arizona, wherever, and I'm talking about the driest portions, I know Flagstaff is more, anyway, you can put a humidifier or a misting system to make it more humid. It's always easier to add moisture than to get rid of it in my experience, keeping reptiles for almost 15 years. And the lighting is the same as crested geckos. So I'm gonna give the point to crested geckos again. I'm gonna say that lower temperature and higher humidity is going to be easier than a higher temperature and lower humidity for most people. Now, of course, this is subjective. It's not the same for everybody. And I'm just some bonehead and I gotta give you a score so the video follows the format. So three to one. You're tickling my neck. You're tickling me. Category number four, diet. The diet is gonna be easy with both. As I said, they're both beginner species. And just to elaborate, I don't think anything's really a beginner species. I just think there's certain things that are easier than others. Don't get an animal just because it's a beginner if you don't want it. If you want something that's intermediate, do more research and get that. Don't get animals you don't actually want because you think you have to, you don't. Either way, crested geckos, diet. You can use a prepared diet, something like a Pangea, Rapashi, Clark's, uh, whatever, it doesn't really matter, okay? These are easy because you mix up with a little bit of water and that's it. You refrigerate the powder, you put the powder in a cup, you mix it with water so it makes a paste, you put it in the enclosure, you get rid of it the next day. That's it. Every other day, every third day, this is what you do. I recommend adding in some supplemental cricket powder or some sort of protein type powder, not like the gold standard protein powder you take to get swole, not that. There are certain powders available because I think they need insects. So you can do that, add it as a powder, or just give them live insects. Dubia roaches, discoid roaches, crickets are what I give. I fed them crickets earlier today. You can see them moving around actually. And that's gonna make it easier, once a week. So every other day, powder, once a week, crickets. If you wanna feed a leopard gecko, that which you have to, by the way, if you, if you keep them. If you don't feed your leopard gecko, it'll be smelly. Crickets are the easiest with dubia roaches, mealworms. It depends. Certain animals are going to keep certain ways. And really, mealworms are probably easier than crickets. But I just like crickets because I like to watch my animals hunt. And watching leopard geckos hunt is super cute and super fun. And that's part of the reason you got one of them in the first place is how fun are they, which we're going to get to in the next category. Either way, it depends what's easier for you. I mean, I think that a powder diet is easier than keeping crickets or going to get crickets every week. So I'm gonna give this point again to crested geckos. So we're four to one. Can we tie it up? Let's see. Oh, and no, you can't feed a powder diet only to a leopard gecko. They need live insects, period. Category number five, behavior. This is maybe the most important because 
at the end of the day, the first four categories, they're so easy, it could be a toss up. I mean, neither one of them is difficult. It just depends what you like. But behavior is what really matters. Because if you want an animal that doesn't move around a lot or isn't hit, like it, this is what really matters. This is why you get an animal in the first place, how you interact with it, how you watch it. Leopard geckos, I think are more handleable. How many times have I paid attention to this thing? Never, they don't jump, they're not squirmy, they're not fast, they're probably not gonna bite you knock on wood. I've been bit one time by a leopard gecko and it was my own fault. Breeding season, it was a male. I touched a female, then I touched the male. And if you don't know, when they breed, basically a male grabs onto the back of the head of the female. So it thought that I was a female. Crested geckos, on the other hand, are going to jump. I don't think they're unpredictable. They're also just as unlikely to bite you. It just depends. And with behavior, let's talk about how the animals feel because I'm thinking, when you think of behavior, you're thinking how they handle or how they behave when they're being handled. Now, a leopard gecko is a little bit rougher. It's bumpier. Crested geckos feel smooth, like the inside of a puppy's ear. I just think it's a very different feel. I personally love both of them. I know that they're boring because they're beginner. Everyone has them, super cheap reptiles. But at the end of the day, I don't care. I love reptiles because I love reptiles. I love reptiles I can handle. And leopard geckos and crested geckos are easy to handle no matter who you are or your experience level. And even if they did bite you, they're probably not gonna draw blood. And even if they did, it doesn't really hurt. It's gonna scare you maybe if you're not used to it. But I promise you, the teething puppy that bites you a little bit and you don't think anything of it because it's cute, hurts more than a leopard gecko or a crested gecko bite. Now, in terms of how they behave in their enclosures, crested geckos and leopard geckos are both not that eager to move around. I think that if you wanna watch something in three dimensions, so it's gonna be high, low, you know, here, there, everywhere, crested geckos are gonna use more of the enclosure where leopard geckos are mostly on the floor. So it really depends what you want. Personally, I think that because the tails come off less frequently with leopard geckos, it takes a little bit more for a leopard gecko to lose its tail. And crested geckos drop them a bit easier and crested geckos don't develop them back. They won't regrow their tail. I personally think that leopard geckos are gonna take this one. So we're gonna call it two to four. And for the interest of the video to make it so that we could tie it up potentially for category number six, we're gonna give two points to the winner. And that category is morphs, price and availability. No matter how you slice it, they are cheap or expensive. Because if you want a normal leopard gecko or a normal crested gecko, they're basically giving them away. If you're paying 40 bucks, that is top dollar for either one. Literally, you can get them for free. Right, people give them away all the time. When you get into morphs, it's different. There are animals like Beatrice, for example, who is, you know, if you can see at this reptile expo, right, Rosemere reptiles out of Ontario somewhere, wherever they are, they have Beatrice, which is an all white animal, right? If you get an all white animal like this, it's $2,000, that's what they're selling it for. If you get a black knight leopard gecko, they're gonna sell for a thousand bucks or more. So it just depends. You can get a two, three thousand dollar animal, and I saw a crested gecko go for $16,000 at an expo once. Anyway, I'm not really into the morphs, except for the ones that I deal with, with leopard geckos. I, I just, I don't know, to me, I think that they're so common, so popular. I personally believe that a Black Knight Leopard Gecko is probably gonna be $200 in two or three years. In my opinion, I'm not really invested in something like that. And I think that if you wanna get an animal that is beautiful, let's suppose that you get a high red Crested Gecko or some sort of albino Leopard Gecko, you can get them for 50, 60, 100 bucks all day long. Even this animal here has three genes in her. And I mean, maybe she'd sell for, 150 bucks. I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it to create beautiful animals. And because I have a really great audience and I have a large audience, I'm able to sell these animals and I'm not going to be stuck with them. I've done videos like this one right here about why you shouldn't breed animals unless you're truly ready. And the really lucky thing about having a YouTube channel with, you know, a quarter million subscribers or whatever we're at now when you're watching this is I can sell these animals really, really easily. So I'm in a unique position. I don't recommend you go out and try to breed these things. This video is more about what's the best pet for you. And at the end of the day, I'll always have a leopard gecko because I think they're the best pet gecko that you can have. Did I just give away who won? Now, in terms of availability, they're both available. If you go to a reptile expo, if you go to a reptile shop, do not go to a PetSmart to buy reptiles for crying out loud, please. Video right here as to why. I think you're gonna find them 
everywhere. Every single expo I've ever been to, there are hundreds of each, and they go from the bargain, you know, $20 leopard gecko, crested gecko, all the way up to the thousands. So it depends what you want. I think they're all beautiful, like they're amazing. You can't go wrong with either one. And for the sake of argument, and because I know you're gonna hate it because it's like kissing your sister, I'm gonna give it a tie. Think that leopard geckos take the cake on this one because you can sell them for the most, you can sell them for the least. They come in the most morphs, morphs are the most different. They're the easiest to breed. I just think overall leopard geckos are probably my favorite, although, Cresta geckos are really, really growing on me. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Which one do you have? What made you make up your mind? Do you have both? Will you be getting both? And while you're down there, please hit the like and subscribe button. I'd really, really appreciate it. it really helps the channel. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can be part of the Patreon club and know exactly what the pairing is for little Shelby here and all the other leopard geckos. We've got like eight breeding females this year. It's gonna be a wild year. You know all about that and more, plus you know all about the Madagascar stuff that's going on because that's where I am. When you're watching this, I'm probably playing with a lemur. How about that? Anyway, that's it. Because I do videos twice a week, Mondays and Thursdays, that means I'll see you in the next one.